All right, let's call you back now. On to the grips. So, not so fond of these grips either. I just don't, I mean, it's cool that it's toothless grip, but again, you're in the cold out in Minnesota. In order to program this board, you have to take these grips off. You can't do, you know, hold the trigger, power up. It don't work. I could see in, you know, hotter climate climates, this gun is, you know, good. But cold, I don't know. Um, to get to these grips, and if you were to buy one of these new, when you first get these, these are impossible to get open. I mean, just impossible. So what you do is you grab from down here, and these ones are still, these ones are still new. Slide your finger, pull back, a little latch right here will pop out. And what you do is you come down here, grab, kind of like this. You want to grab and pull forward this way. What that'll do is it'll kind of release right here. Once you kind of feel this move forward, don't pull any farther because you're actually pulling this rubber, which that was my also concern was after a while, you're putting strain on this. And I'll show you inside of these eventually. So, and then it's loose. And you flip it over and then you do the same thing. Um, to adjust the trigger, they do have holes in here, so you can adjust it from the outside and so you don't have to open up the grip frame, but you don't have to worry with that with like other guns. So again, come back in, pull forward, this little portion right up here is popped out now, and then you go. So as you can see, come on. Not that hard, I'm just being careful with it. So as you can see, these tabs are going to wear out eventually. I mean, they're hard plastic, but you know, eventually they're going to wear out. Um, my older ones, these jewels pop out. They weren't even embedded into the grip frame or into here. They just, they just weren't. Um, you can see that there's little tabs right here that's what goes right up in here and then that's what clips up into here and you can see that I don't know if you can see there's a little slot and then there's a little that's where the LED light shines at you that's the only thing that tells you that the guns on and shooting um, since we have the grip frame off I'm going to get up. I'm going to have to go up and show you. Hopefully it'll focus. And it probably won't. Try zooming. Come on. It's not going to focus, are you? Okay, well... You can kind of see it's one of those little old style micro switch. Let's see if I can find the picture. Like the Dangerous Power had them. Those style switches. I'm sorry, guys, that it's not focusing, but for a cheap camera, what do you expect? That's how you tune, or that's how you turn the gun to activate to a different mode. That's how you tell it to um, program. Um, and then that's also how you tell it to um, to have first shot drop off or not. So I thought that was very lacking. Um, it's got a good battery wire harness comes out, which is nice, in case this breaks, whatever. Um, as you can see, the air runs up through in here, through the back. Um, your micro switch, um, your trigger. I'm going to see if I can zoom in and that will focus. 
No. Darn. Oh well. Um, sorry I can't get more of internals on it, but you got your... I don't know the, which one's the eyes or in which one's the cell light, but they're wrapped up together. Um, your spring. This is... This is the set screw. This set screw was flush with the body when I got the gun. It was not supposed to be. So what was happening was when I was shooting with my left hand, it was shooting fine. But then when I would switch over to my right one, it would go, and I'm like, what the heck? Well, my friends were just confused what was going on. So I went into the gun, uh, into the gun, and that was flush, and so I screwed it out a little, or no, I screwed it in. I don't know, I can't remember. I screwed it out, and then screwed it in, no, I screwed it out, because it, then it kind of was seizing up, and I thought maybe, you know, something was wrong, so I turned it in a little bit, and then went in farther, and it kept going in farther, I'm like, oh. Well, once I had screwed it in, I had bumped the trigger, and like the trigger was stiff, and it was like a good trigger. And I went, "Oh, okay." So that that wasn't even in all the way. Um, I did also forget to mention the bolt wasn't lubed, but it wasn't. It was fine shooting it, so it still shoots fine. I've had our field look at it, or where I got this, the field looked at it, and they were fine. I didn't say anything was wrong with it. To move the ASA back and forward, this is the set screw um, that holds it. Let's see what else. Um, this is the batteries I guess they come with, paintballs, so that's good. Uh, the set screws for the grip frames are right here. This one actually goes into it. This one, the grip frame has a notch and the screw sets into it and then you set it, set it into the gun and then you screw it in and that's how this front screw works. The back side. I'm not very fond of this. I don't like this. I don't like there's extra crap that can go wrong. Um, this is the LED. This is the board. It's very small which is nice. But this runs to the switches back here. And yes, on a $1600 gun you get a flashing light to know your gun. But you press the top button, turns on your gun, very quick boot up, I think a little bit quicker than the Etha. I don't know that, I haven't timed it. Um, to turn the eyes off, you just hold the bottom button, and then eyes are off. Turn them back on, you hold the button, and then eyes are on. Yeah. I have it on semi right now, so no ramping. Um, turn it off, hold the button down. I did find a weird mode where you hold the trigger down and you hit the power button and it goes blue light and then if you hold the trigger down then it shoots later. I don't know if it's like a tech mode or something or it's just sh shooting it off, I don't know. But I'm just worried about that wire being, as you can see, it's just it's getting smushed and smashed, there's no there's just there's no channel inside the grips. Um, these are the set screws to adjust the trigger. If I remember correctly, this one adjusts how far before the trigger activates the micro switch, and the top one I don't remember. If you really guys want it, I can post a comment about it. But yeah. Um, see what else. Other than that, it's basic. Um, the trigger, I find when this, uh, this, the gun came, the springs are very stiff. Very, very stiff. Um, this, again, this pin comes out, this whole thing pulls out. These set screws right here, I don't know if you guys can see it, this will actually adjust where the trigger positions. So it could be, if you like your trigger up here, you can have it up here. If you want it down here, you can, you know, the planet clip style, you can have it down here. Uh, which was that, that was cool. So, it's a good trigger. Um, I'm s still used to planet clips, so it, I would need time to get used to it. Um, as for putting the grips back on, 
and you just slide it on. I don't like that there's, I wish there was something I could tuck this wire in because it can get caught right as you can see. It can get caught and then you put it on, you rip it out, and then you need to go buy a new battery harness. But you slide it on, it kind of like snaps in. You kind of have to bow the front portion of the trigger out a little bit, put it in, do the same thing with the other side. And then with these ones, you just push it over. Snaps in place, then I kind of just make sure it gets in there. Uh, my only other concern is this. If you get shot from the front of the gun, there's a gap here that goes straight to where I just had the grips off. Let me see if I can get... That's a gap inside to the gun. There's nothing that holds it. It's just where your hand goes. That's, you know, like I said, just, I mean, there's not very much chance because your hands are going to be over it. But again, you get shot from here. You know, someone bunkers you. It's just, I don't know why. Um, to get this off, I'm not very fond of this. You gotta take this screw out. Then you gotta take a credit card. Yes, I said a credit card. Slip it into here. I'll just use the warranty card. Slip it in. Slide it back to here. There's a little tab right here. And you gotta pop it out. Both sides. And then this just slides off, and then it's just a green tube. Um. The reg on this is um, the shims, kind of like Bob Long's, but not exactly. Um, there's no, I like how Bob Long put an O-ring on it, so in case you did pull it out, the shims don't go everywhere, because they've already done that to me, and I was like, not happy. So, um... I think that's one thing they could change. Um, other than that, I th it's the the tube does come off from the gun. Um, I'm trying to think what else. The LPR is very simple. Um, what else? Yeah, I think that's about it that I can cover. Oh, the eye pipe. I'm not too fond of this. I mean, it's cool, but it's just, it's cool that it covers the eyes, and so when that blue O-ring that I had showed you on the bolt comes through, it squeegees this, so it acts, so you, you know, in case you do break a ball. Um, this gun is, after it's not fully tuned correctly yet, um, but when it came, when it came with the LPR screwed out all the way, and the rig out all the way, um, luckily when this was screwed out all the way and we did air it up, it just vented straight right away. Um, it kicked worse than an A5. I mean, worse than an A5, and it was loud like a E Tech, louder than E Tech, as one of my friends had said. I did tune it, and it sounds. Like in a normal apartment, you know, I have a 750 square feet apartment or 700, but anyway, it's kind of a normal living room in those size apartments. It sounds like one of those Pillberry dough, the, the tubes, when you pop it open, it sounds about like that in a building. Um, and there was almost no kick. So, but I, I'd like to give it a chance, but with this 3.1 deal. I just want something that works. Um, ergonomically, I do like this ultralight frame. I like how it contours to my hands. I know some people on my team were like, it just, they just didn't feel comfortable. Um, the front grip, they made it a little too tight. It, my knuckle bumps up under the thumb. But usually when I shoot, I shoot like this, and it's nice with this here. Um, this gun is a little bit heavy. 
Um, it's partly because I'm guessing they had you have to have more metal for the um, channels of air to run through the gun. So, but balanced wise, it's not bad. I mean, it's. So we're gonna find the balance point. The balance points with the barrel is a little bit behind the hopper. So, I mean, it's, it's good. Um, grips are very tacky. Um, I couldn't compare them to Planet Eclipse. It's hard to say. I think maybe the Planet Eclipse are about the same. Um, they, I mean, they do very well if your hands got sweaty, dirty, whatnot. Um... Let's see what else. I think that's about it. If there's any more things you guys want to know about the gun, just let me know. I'll make more videos. I'm pretty sure there's some stuff I'm forgetting. Um, in my next video, I'm going to do a review on the Etha. So if there's any hardcore die fans out there, they don't complain. <laughs> um... It's just I've I've always been a fan of PE and our whole team runs PE, so thanks for watching.